Good afternoon, Cloud and AI fans, and welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here for our last segment at Google Cloud Next. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by a by my familiar faces and friends, and apparently my ability articulates kind of waning here at the end of day three. We've got Dustin, Rebecca, and John. Such a lovely week with yeah. the three of you. My This, this gosh. is our wrap up. Yeah. Yes. End of the show right now, after this segment. I know. We, we get to relax. <laughs> it's kind of burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, we're only in Las Vegas. It's like I'm super hydrated all the time. It's fabulous. We had, we had 35 segments this week. We had, over the course of the three days, we had 42 different guests. So oh. many compelling insights. Over 30 stories. stories on Silicon Angle posted. Shipped, yeah. ton of content. Yeah. It's a lot of flowing content. And a lot of great conversations just in the booths, yeah. in oh, the hallway, at incredible. lunch. It was, it was a really, it's a lot of energy can, at this Can show. we get the AI to summarize all of that, John, yeah, into like a, a right? one pager maybe? I don't, I don't know. have the That'd chip implant yet, so I okay. can't speak it, but I know Gemini's all over it. Yeah, right I'd hope so. <laughs> Google's listening. <laughs> I'm curious. So we'll, we'll go through a bunch of highlights, but I'm curious what your favorite announcements were. Dustin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, well, I mean, the generative AI for code and developers just continues progressing. It's not a big surprise, mm -hmm. uh, but the steps that we're taking toward high level uh, articulation of what you want some code to do for you and code being generated from that, it's, in, it's incredible. And there's a lot of players out there working on that. I mean, Google's just incredible uh, when it comes to that, that technology. They are, and it's a huge, I mean, you and I talk a lot about the developer experience yeah. and some big leaps and bounds yep. made this week, I think. Rebecca, what about you? I always gravitate toward the announcements that are really for the non-tech people. So this is really about how normal people do their day-to-day, -day. and so I am I'm most intri intrigued by the, the announcements that have to do with our personal productivity, so the, so the Gemini, I'm, I'm just going to say. I mean, yeah. this is what I think will have the most impact on people's day-to-day -day experience of their jobs. John, what about you? That's a tough call, there's so many announcements. I think two things, one is, what wasn't announced. You didn't see the Jensen on stage, the playbook of these big shows where they trot out and they try to do AI washing. They delivered AI goods, so that's just kind of categorically just props to Google on that. Um, I love the Gemini 1.5 Pro with the million token context window. Yeah. I know it's more and they won't say the number, but I think it's like 10 million, so there's a ton of headroom there. That's going to change what I think is my favorite announcement is the combination of the big query, the developer tools, but this cross, the cross modality, the cross uh, modality analysis Analysis. It's that's going to make things so much better because now you can bring stuff into the cloud like a, a form that's got an image on it or a video from the cube that's got text, audio, and video or take a cube interview and maybe run it through Google Vid to make yeah. a TikTok video. So I think we're going to see like massively new use cases. So this multimodal foundation models, I think will will change the app game, and that's going to you know, add it to the coding thing Dustin said. So the modality, cross modality analysis is going to open up productivity gains for stuff that's like takes a lot of prep and big yeah. data, you know, line up the data. So that was my favorite. It's kind of geeky, but I think that's going to have a lot of impact and build, will, will enable agents, better coding, just cooler stuff for like an average person. How about you, Savannah? What yeah. was your favorite? Well, I'm, I'm a bit with you, Rebecca, where I, I like to think about, you know, we, we talk a lot about 2024 being the year that we make AI real. And, and when I think of real, I, I think of my mom as a user, for example. <laughs> and, and I love my mom, shout out always to mom. Aww. Uh, but I, I think of when is, when is it going to actually touch her life? And when is it going to make her life easier or more efficient or more fun or help her creativity or whatever that might be? And so I think a lot of the workspace announcements are really interesting. I love that you brought up Google Vids. I mean, I think, I think the fact that we're seeing AI tools for creators coming out of a space that's about collaboration from from Google is, is really interesting. It's and and one of the things you have said that I found very astute, Savannah, is that Google is such a familiar platform to everyone. A lot, yes. We all have yep. Gmail accounts. Everyone's We're all very something. familiar with Google yeah. as a verb. Yeah, it's a verb, exactly. And so it's an intuitive way to interact with, and so if they're, if they're introducing AI to the masses, it is something that we all can kind of get behind. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually, one yeah. thing I'd like to point out, Dustin brought up earlier about the naming. They change names on things. They don't call certain things they had before, like in the Kubernetes area, they call it cross, um, cross cloud, cross environment. So yeah. you're starting to see Google starting to think like it's about the solution outcome, not so much the product. You know, so that's cool too because the AI's being driven from boards now. So it's like we heard on theCUBE, yeah. um, the big highlight for me was hearing, which was new to me, well, I knew the boards were pressure was high, but like all the actions coming from the board and management, get AI because the business yep. growth 
companies realize that the future value of their business will be impacted by Gen AI and they don't know what to do. Yeah. So get on it, team. Yeah, I, I can totally see how much Google is listening to its customers and prospects, mm. uh, watching what the competitors are doing. Uh, but I totally can see the Google roadmap, the cloud roadmap here really being driven by the boardroom all the way down to the developer uh, and everything in between. And so uh, many of the products that we've seen launch are real sol solving real needs and those are solutions at, at, at its core. I think that's a really good point that you just made, Dustin. So I'm curious, so I was a Gmail beta tester oh, 19 years on you. ago, back on in you. the day. Yes, uh, so I want to know what your first Gmail email address was. Oh, it's the same Gmail email <laughs> address I, I have, yeah. But do you remember you, you used to have to get uh, invites? You had to get an no, invitation, No, I remember, I was right? one of the, the people. Who did you get your invitation from? With How about that? From? Uh, so I was the yearbook editor-in-chief, and it was one of the, my, it was the co-editor of, of the, of the publication, but we were chosen because we were creators to be testers from gotcha. Google, so that we got a, a little bit of an allocation. So then mm. I had, I think I ended up getting some. How many invites. Gmail addresses do you have? John, that's a number I don't reveal on camera. That's a personal <laughs> question. But I, have, but I definitely have more than one, and they are used for multiple purposes. Can you share your first? Yes, so my first email, I don't know why I didn't think to use my name, like most oh. people would have, uh, I didn't. This was kind of back in the AIM days when you had your screen name, for you know, sure. your oh, yeah, AIM yeah, yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was jumping goose. Because I was a triple jumper, and, oh, and my mom always called gal. me Goose. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Like so it. when Bobby was talking about track earlier, I was thinking, thinking about that. That's pretty but cool. Yeah, yeah, so I was a jumping goose. I, sure, whoever has that email now, hopefully they're enjoying it. I, I do jumping not. goose, if you're out there, <laughs> I'd love to buy that from you <laughs> right now, Savannah just for personal vanity, yeah. and I'll sell it back to Savannah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, Hotmail, I, I don't know when I um, I, had a, I had an AT&T dot um, WorldNet right. email address. I had Hotmail. Yeah, Prodigy. I had, I had the Prodigy. Great I didn't have a Prodigy. I didn't have a Prodigy. Um, AOL, of course. Yeah. Um, AOL, I went with a. What was your a, screen name, John? J, JF781 was my. Uh, uh, but I did Google Gmail before I got the name. Then that I realized there's other furries. I'm like, I'm going to get the family name. Yeah, all my, yeah. Right. I was an early adopter, so everyone. <laughs> Twitter. So let's take this back to you know. AI and say, like, you remember how groundbreaking it was to get an email address, right? Yeah. And that yeah. was like, are, was are you on the line? I shared right? my are, first are email you with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shared an email address with Did my you have an MSN email? Did you have an MSN Because it was expensive. So you just you just shared one. Yeah. Yeah. Which but, is crazy to think about now. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I was just bringing this to the AI point, which is like, at some point, email just became taken for granted. Everybody had one. It's the way we did everything. And I, I don't know, it feels like we're right at that crossover point where AI just becomes part of our every expectation of every piece of software that we have. Just like everything is going to have an email address or every business is going to have an, a website or an email address, right? And ChatGPT will seem so quaint and antiquated. Yeah. Remember how we were all awed yeah, it's that be the AOL could or, pretend yeah. to be Shakespeare? I mean, it was yeah, just, like, well, it's, we're so old, we used to write emails. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We didn't just prompt them, we didn't just prompt them. It, it was brought up a, an interesting point. I think, yeah, I love, I, someone smarter than me once said something to me when I started working in 3D printing, and when, when we got the internet and we got computers, we did what we've always done, we wrote letters. We just called it email. So I'm curious to see with this new tool, with AI, with AI everywhere, Okay, great, so we have this thing, and it's like the internet. What is, what's the real power going to be? And so I'm curious if, and I don't worry, I have not forgotten, we have not talked about your first Gmail, Rebecca, and we're coming <laughs> back to that. It's right logged in my brain. But I'm curious if you, what you think are going to be, or if anything you heard this week made you think bigger picture what some of these solutions are, not just the tech behind the solutions, but some of the most powerful solutions that are going to come out of this. Like I love talking to the life uh, science I'll, guys. I mean, I, yeah. I'll start. I thought the, the having the arm guy on with Mark yeah. Le Lohmeyer for the CPU, although he wouldn't reveal the nanometer size is probably seven or maybe five, not three. If it was not three, they'd be, to talk about size. They'd be, they'd be, they'd be <laughs> bragging if it was three. <laughs> the, the, the arm is very good for like edge devices. So to me, is, I think when you start thinking about data personalization, we talked about this all the time, Dustin, yep. the user experiences that are not that are voice interacted or automatic to users or seamless, yeah. invisible as we talked about earlier. I think you said that Savannah or, um, is, is key. That's going to be I think where the dots connect with AI when things become so abstracted away and they just happen. So if you're in your daily life, the edge devices will pick it up and that your personal LLM will be there. Right? I think yeah. we're going to have our own kind of foundation model and we'll have our own agents. 
yeah. acting on our behalf. We don't want to do QB anymore, we just say go, agent, you know, holograms. I don't like to think of them being more charming than us. So <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you know they're there though. Remember, we yeah. we did an we did an interview with the uh, with the McKinsey consultant, and he was describing a study that patients said that the their AI doctors they knew it was an AI doctor, so they 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 knew they weren't talking to a human, but that they preferred the AI doctor because. Mm the AI seemed to empathize with them more and seemed to wow. listen to them more. And I think most importantly, which is where I'm going yeah. with this, I see the power in medicine because yeah. as if you've ever had any kind of medical issue, you know you have to go see the specialist and then you have to talk to consult with that specialist and you really need everyone's brains working to sure. create a diagnosis and then a treatment plan. But that's what AI can do. They can be the, the specialist over here and, and that general practitioner and also, yeah. so. I interviewed um, a, um, this radiation in the cloud. They're doing stuff now on a large scale where they can detect stuff at the point of scanning. Wow. So today you scan, someone gets yeah. it, they got to call a doctor, is he available? You leave, you come back, oh, let's get a different angle. They got it so good now where the AI assist can help the operator be the doctor on the, on the help, and then shoot angles to get better pictures at sure. the point of, and then now, that's all done in the cloud. And you have the collective scans of everyone else working, so that's like happening now. I just interviewed someone um, here at the show on that, and that's a game changer. Yeah. Because but the alternative was the old way. Mm -hmm. Misdiagnosis, cancer, Breast cancer is huge. That's a big area. These two, we're yeah. talking to these oh. two silos. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the connecting the dots. I mean, yeah. I mean that's where this yeah. all this all starts with big data, machine learning, and now we're able to make inferences and better decisions about it. So I'm going to bury all the other ideas that I would have talked about and say, like Rebecca, wow, uh, the humanity, the improvements to humanity we yeah. can make applying Absolutely. AI yeah. to medicine. Yeah, yeah. It, the, it, the sky's the limit, it, right? Yeah, and it's going to affect all of us. That's yeah. what's yeah. yeah. And it's really going to improve quality of life. I mean, we. We talk a lot, we joke a lot, you and I, especially John, about the democratization of AI. It's not democratized until it's helping everyone at every income level in every country in, in different parts of this planet. One of the things I thought was really interesting when I was preparing to speak at CES and talk about AI and healthcare specifically, I'm so glad you brought it up, was an actually pop quiz for you guys. Uh -oh. When telemedicine came out, okay. what demographic do you think used it the most? Young people, millennials, or whatever the, the, the youngest age was, you know? Okay. That'd be my guess. What are your guesses? I'm going to go with old people because they're the ones who are the sickest. Fair no guess. adoption at all. No one, no one wanted to use it. <laughs> okay. That's like Price is Right. That's no, no. I got to go with one dollar. <laughs> 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 you know, like, you know. Low income. The lowest income among us are the highest adopters of telemedicine. Okay. So when we think about the, the ability to bring things like medicine to more remote areas or to different places like you're talking about and to be able to engage people who are completely forgotten in a traditional system, sure. we can achieve so many great things for yeah, the planet. Yeah. So it's it's very cool. I, I, I am excited. I, I, love, I love the prices, right, John? This is like, <laughs> oh I like yeah. Okay, so Rebecca, what was your first Gmail? It's, it's, it's my same it's Gmail same, now. Same here, yeah. Oh, okay. so none, of, none of you wanted to be incognito, so I've always had multiple personalities and alter egos. I, mean, I have and other like, emails. Maybe this that's is called just, proton yeah. mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super fair. Was there anything that either of you expected to see this week that we didn't? I thought it'd be, it'd be more, I know they did on this day too, but, um, and I think they're holding back, so I don't think they want to release it too much, because it may seem overhyped, but I truly predicted, and I still stay stand by it, the agents are going to be a big application. The idea of these agents emerging that are going to augment the human in the loop is going to be a big part of that next gen. It's a chat bot today, we start getting multimodal ingestion and reasoning. The prompt answer side of AI, everyone knows, but this whole reasoning and reinforced learning piece will be huge, and I think when agents start getting that real knowledge and reliability, uh, is that'll be a game changer. I thought we'd hear more about that, um, but we didn't hear as much as I thought. I, I thought this was really interesting. Dustin, I'm curious to see how you think. Coming from Paris at KubeCon, where yeah. we actually didn't talk about AI as much as I expected us really? to. Really? No, oh. I did not feel, the conversations well. we had on the desk, not, not, at nowhere near the level of what I was expecting. Okay. And versus here, I don't think we got 
two minutes into an interview sure. without it coming up. I mean, this yeah. is kind of the Gen AI party yeah. right now, the Gen, yeah. AI, Gen yeah. AI party, which which is pretty cool. Uh, so I, I would say that, that that fit where I expected. The thing that surprised me was the level of collaboration happening between these huge, mm. massive companies and, and the desire for interoperability and, and the awareness that in order to achieve these big dreams that everyone has with AI, that yeah. a lot of the huge players in the room here are going to have to work together. Yeah. Can, I, can I raise my hand again? <laughs> you sure can, okay. John. So, I'm going to call on so, you. All right, so I think this couple, the question's a tough one because we're at theCUBE. I think as the show, they did check the box. Think about the order of magnitude they had to deal with. Workspace cloud, which they call the collaboration cloud, security cloud, data cloud, developer cloud, modern infrastructure was included, Google distributed compute cloud, cross cloud network, workload optimization infrastructure, and Vertex AI. All that stuff was on the docket, and they did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So there was still so much stuff buried in there, so the, it's, a, it's a tougher question because they kind of talked about it, but and you heard different groups, your, the, uh, the whole developer side, that didn't get much play. Yeah. Gemini Codex, it's a big deal, but it didn't get buried, it's just there it was so much. Yep. Yeah. So it's a, tough, it's a tough question because we were only here. Yep. On theCUBE, we didn't hear a lot about um, um, some like more of the technical stuff we had, although we had CPU on, but there was, they, they did they check a lot of boxes on they this did. show. They did, and there were a lot of really interesting sessions. Sessions on sustainability, sessions on women, they had a whole inclusion lounge yeah. here. Show floor was Public pumping. sector? Yeah. I would say that was a totally, Public another big surprise for me was just frankly how many people, I mean this is double the size of Google Cloud Next yeah. last time, which is really saying something and, and it truly feeling like the before times in here. There's they, just a lot of energy, they, which they helps got, us here. They got, they got, everything's lined up, and again, when you start having that AWS effect, I call the, like the fire hose, yeah. you're starting to see it, that's the signal to me. And, and again, the big surprise to me is the continued success of the ecosystem. Um, I knew it was going to be big, but not as big this year. They all had bigger booths, they all had parties, there was biz dev activity going on, so there's action happening yeah. here at Google Cloud. Yeah, there's definitely definitely a lot of action happening. We're in Las Vegas and we talked a lot about food in Paris. What kind of fun did you get into this week, Dustin? I had a dynamite steak last night. And not only did you go a to lot of steak. Place? Uh, no, but oh. that sounds awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good steaks in Vegas. What yeah. you, Rebecca? Any memorable? Yeah, I, I, I said it this morning. I went to Comfort, uh, no, Carson Kitchen in Fremont, oh, yeah, right. which was divine. What Highly did you recommend. Eat? What, did, what would you... uh, We had chicken skins. We had this bacon and jam on a warmed baguette. We had a, a beet salad. We had um, Even deviled eggs. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. You could have like, a little bit of healthy. I love that balance. A little bit. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, We're so virtuous. Yes. John, did you leave the convention center or did you just <laughs> eat I, complex man, carbohydrates provided? <laughs> the, the finger food at all the, all the events was tons of activity, so I did a lot of events, didn't watch any, I did, I did hit the noodle uh, oh, Chinese yeah. place. They had great lo mein, I thought that was phenomenal, and the rice was phenomenal, so good dishes there. Um, and then had strip steak last night with uh, the team and some, some other analysts. Um, that was a good, a good steak and that was pretty much it. The rest was all, Grab food here. Yeah, yeah. Sticks and whatever we yeah. can, yeah. <laughs> cookies and whatever else is available. All right, last question for y'all, and I'm going to wrap us with a question that I wrap every one of our guests with. What do you? What can't you say today that you hope to be able to say the next time we're at Google Cloud Next? Dustin, I'm going to go to you first. I, I'm going to go with the security angle. It's it's Shut what you? I, yeah, security? me. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, I would love to be able to say that uh, all the AIs and models are secured. That we really have a, a tight That's bound so on security. I don't think we can say that yet. No. Uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of conversations I had uh, this week around how we do that, what needs to be solved, um, but we're not there yet. So. Hopefully we can put security in our rear view mirror for AI, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, all right, so security over here. Rebecca, what about you? I'm going to go with, with my take on things, which is the individuals, your mom. I, mm -hmm. wanna, I want her to feel that AI is helping her do her job such that she has more time for you, more time to be creative, and, and, and just a better overall quality of life because AI is reducing her toil. Yes. So that's what I want. I love that. My mom will love that too. <laughs> Um, for me, two things. One is, from a, on a personal side, with SiliconANGLE and the Cube, you know, when uh, I can't say that right now, I, we would move all of our code off Amazon into Google because we have probably a good use case for Google Cloud. I'd, I'd argue, after this show, it's on the table. Wow. I, I would say that we'll evaluate, but this, we'll check all the, the requirements. So, 
I can't say that right now, but it's on the table, so it's a discussion. Hmm. Next year, maybe, we'll see. So maybe that's the set, that one. From a reporter standpoint, from a, from a research analyst perspective, the Asian builder component of Model Garden, I hope to say next year that that will be more robust with better use cases, better usability and programmability for customers. So that's, we can have better, more agents. I think that's a disruptive because that'll tear down old technology that was, was was built pre-Gen AI, so I think that'll bring in the new era of Gen AI technology that will change the app market. So I think that agents, I hope to say next time that'll be better. Cool, well I can't wait to see. I hope that we have a new breed of entrepreneur or business model that comes out of this. I hope we have more customer wow. stories that yeah. are actually at scale with data they can share publicly that show the, the benefits and the impact beyond the hype. I want it to be to actually be real. We're yeah. in the year of making it real and then I want the reality next yeah. year, which will yeah. be great. Well. John, Rebecca. You guys have been amazing. Yeah. I got to no, just say. No, this has been you guys really have fun. Been amazing. What about the production team, huh? Who? Oh, he, she's guys. Getting, she's getting there. I, oh yeah. I, there. Don't, steal it, don't steal it, don't thunder. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> yes, my thunder is actually just hey, like nice as well. Other people, let's go. But I mean, this truly was, I mean the three of us I really had just a blast. Rob as yeah. well did an absolutely outstanding yeah. job. We had such a massive team. Shout out to everyone behind the camera because they are even more beautiful than us. We've got Andrew, Anderson, Noah, Jay, and Don. You guys really held it down all week. Thank you for listening to our voices and making us look good and making the guests feel comfortable, most importantly. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful planet Earth. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada, signing off for the last time at Google Cloud Next. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.